Praise the Lord, children. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What happens when you hear praise the Lord? Good morning. We want to thank God for this day. It is Sunday school time. So call mommy, call auntie, call everyone who is in your house. Let them come and we fellowship together. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. My name is Sadat. I'm saved this morning. I've missed you. How many of you have missed me? Have you really missed me? You've never made a call just to say hi to teacher. And even me have not called. So we will call. Sindio. So we want to pray as we begin. Let's put our hands together. We zip our mouth and we close our eyes. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we want to thank you for this good day that you've made, that you may rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you, Lord, for your mercies that are renewed every morning. Thank you, Lord, that you daily Lord us with benefits, oh Lord. We bless you, we glorify your name. As your children, we want to come before you, my Lord, and we want to listen unto your word. Father, teach us your word. Help us to understand and help us to memorize also your word because you are a good God. We thank you for the gift of life you've given unto us, gift of provision, oh Lord. Thank you even for those who are going back to school. Thank you even for those who need school fees you are providing and you are giving them journey masses to school because you are a good God. Lord, bless our parents. We thank you and we bless you. It is in Jesus' name that we pray and believe. Amen. Praise the Lord, children. Amen. I know all of us, we have our notebook. Because today is Sunday, I know you're already prepared. You have your notebook, you have your Bible, and you have your pen. Not a paper. You know paper? You'll just use it now and it will get lost. But when you have your notebook, the way you always write in your school books, you'll always go and refer. So let us have our notebook, and not different notebooks every day, but we'll be using the same, same notebook that we are having, we'll be using it today, next Sunday you'll use like that, like that, until it gets finished. And I know very soon we are coming back to Sunday school. I want to see your book, the way you've been writing. Anybody who comes with their book, the way they've been writing, and it is every topic they've been writing, you'll be given a present. And even if you don't come with it, but you are faithful, maybe today you don't have bundles, and another day you have and you wrote, you'll be given a what? A present. So let us just be children, who are good and who love the Lord. As others are running to go and take their books, we want to sing a song. Which song do we sing? Give me a song, children, so that I can sing. We're going to sing a song that is sung like this. Joy, 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 in my heart is singing. Joy, joy, joy. Jesus set me singing, see what the Lord has done for me. He died just to set me free. He fills my heart with melody, with joy, joy, joy. I'm rejoicing, joy, joy, joy. In my heart is singing, joy, joy, joy. Jesus set me singing. See what the Lord has done for me. He died just to set me free. He fills my heart with melody, with joy, joy, joy. Thank you for singing with me. Last Sunday, we were taught by teacher who? Teacher Mbuli. Can you remember what she taught us? Who can remember? If you remember, tell your mommy what you were taught last Sunday. Teacher Mbuli taught us about God will revive us again. God will revive us again. And she taught us about the Samaritan woman. When Jesus went, uh, when Jesus went to, the, uh, to the well where she was going to draw water, she met Jesus there. And she was so surprised what Jesus was doing there. So Jesus talked to her. And after listening to what God was saying, Jesus is God, after listening to what Jesus was saying, she ran very fast to their home and brought people and told them, come and listen to what this man has told me. And she was revived. She got, she got the word and she was revived in her heart. Anytime we always receive the word of God, we get revived. Do we get revived? 
or when you receive the word of God, you, get, you become sad. Even if you are sad, you will start rejoicing because the Lord has assured you of what he's going to do to you. And whatever he promises, he'll always do. Do you remember the memory verse? I have it here. The memory verse for that day was from the book of Matthew chapter 7 verse 12. What does it say? Do to others what you want them to do for you. Read again. Do to others what you want them to do for you. Let us remember. If you want to others not to steal your pen, don't steal other people's pen. If you want God to bless you, bless those other people also and you'll be blessed. Now today we have a new topic. Our topic today is called are we seeing? Can we read? Help me to read the keys to unlocking restoration. Are we seeing? Who is not seeing? Now in your notebooks, can you write the topic of today? Keys to unlocking restoration. What are keys? We want to start with the keys. What are keys? I have keys here. Are you seeing these ones? These ones are keys. And do we have keys in our home? Or as we don't lock our home, do we lock our door? Do we lock our lo lockers in school? Why do we lock them? So that everything that is there is being kept safe. Even you, you lock your door because you, want, you don't want thieves to come in because some thieves, they just come, they try. If they go, if they find it's not locked, they'll go in. So that's why we use the keys. So today we want to read about keys to unlocking, keys to doing what? Keys to unlocking restoration. So what is unlocking? When you lock your door, what do you do? After you've locked your door like this, what are you supposed to do if you want to go out? You will unlock it. So what is unlocking? Unlocking is opening. Hmm? Maybe you've been given a gift. You have to unlock, maybe unwrap it. So you're unlocking it to see what gift is there. Maybe you have a, you want to get books from your locker. You have to unlock your locker so that you can get uh, your books. So even here we have keys to unlock restoration. And another hard word here is called restoration. What is restoration? Restoration is action of returning something back to the person to the place or to the condition which it was there. So returning something to the person. Maybe you took the book, you're returning that book to that, the owner of that book, you are restoring that book. Or maybe you took maybe a jembe from the store. So when you take that jembe back to the store, you are restoring it back where it was. Or even restoring it back to the right condition. Maybe you have TV and your TV just went and it is now black, you don't even know what to do. So your daddy will take your TV to the fundi, the fundi will make it and bring it back to the right condition. So that is what is going, it's called, it's called what? Restoring, bringing it back to its initial place, Re bringing it back maybe to the owner or even when the child gets lost. And then the mother goes looking for the child. Then when you find this child, the child is restored back to who? To their parents. So that is what is called what? Restoration. So today we want to talk about the keys. There are several keys. Maybe in your house you have how many doors? Your bedroom, your brother's bedroom, your mommy's bedroom, the kitchen. Maybe you have 10 keys. They are unlocking and they are locking different rooms. But today you only want to learn about four keys. I have here four keys. So each key is going to present each, each and everything that the Lord wants to unlock. We are going to read, we are going to start with Number one key that you're going to start with is humble. Can we read humble? And we're going to read the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 16, verse 11. Have we written humble? And you're going to read from the Bible, 1 Samuel, chapter 16, verse 11. We're going to read up the story about who? About David. Help you, ask your mom to help you 
get the verse, the chapter. First Samuel is in the Old Testament. So let mommy help you or daddy help you so that you can find it very fast. We are going to read First Samuel chapter 16 verse 11. What does it say? So he asked, that was Samuel. So he asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? There, there is still the youngest, Jesse answered. He is attending the sheep. Samuel said, send for him. We will not sit down until he arrives. So we are talking about being humble. What is being humble? Being humble ni kunyenyekea. Mane ya kunyenyekea ni nini? Kunyenyekea ni? Uleza kubao down kwa mwalimu, amu bow down kwa president, amu pige salute ju kwa eh, president, iyo ni kukua humble. But kuna hini pia kukua humble, ni kama mamia kikuambia, go and do this work. You've been sent to go and do some work. You humble yourself, you go and do that work. Like David. David was so humble, he had his bigger brothers, but he was the youngest. I believe because he was humble in everything he was being told to do, that's why the father decided to send him. He didn't believe that he was humble. But we see David, because David was so humble and he was very good. That's even what made him to do what? For when Samuel was anointing the king of Israel, he decided God sent him to Jesse's house. And because Jesse had those big boys, he decided Apana, these are not the best people to do what? To anoint. We want to anoint David. David was now in the field. There in the field, I want to show you where David was. David was in the field taking care of his father's animals. See what David did? And because he was humble, God gave him even power to kill lion. Who can kill lion? No one can kill lion. But because David was humble and he was a very good boy when he was sent to do things he could do, God was with him. And I believe that when he was there, when you read the story of David, you'll find David was playing this guitar, he was singing to the Lord, he was praising God where he was there in the field. And that's why God said, this person is humble, David is humble, let me anoint him to be the king. Even as children, when we are humble, even in school, we all, even when they want to choose a, a head girl or a head boy or a class prefect, a teacher will always look for somebody who is humble. Yule amba menyenyekea, yule amba anafanya vitu kulingana na venye wanataka afanye. Huyu ni mwenye malimu atachagua seme, huyu ni mzuri, ako humble, hana tabia mbaya. Wacha ni mchagwe yeye, aungoze ya watu wengine. Because ako humble. Na wewe leo wacha ni kulize. Wewe ako humble kweni? Mame na kuambi utandike kitanda yako unatoroka. Mame na kuambi atuwa kif, uh, nini toa kikombe unakata kutoa. Iyo ni kukua humble lab kweni. Apana. So, tukitaka mungu atubariki. If, if tunataka mungu atupatie ki ya kuristo ile kila kitu ambao tunataka. Itabidi tukue nini? Tukue humble. And God will bless us. We are going to number two. That is key, that was key number one. I'm going to key number two. Mwanaona hizi vifungu zangu. So hizi vifungu zinafungua. Hizo pala ambao zimefungua. Tumeona number 1 key ni humble, number 2 key. Wacha niwaonyeshe. Hebu tusome faithful. Nini maana ya kukuwa faithful? Nini ya maana ya kukuwa mwaminifu? Hmm? Nini maana ya kukuwa mwaminifu? Kuna wengine wetu tunatumwa kwenda kwa duka kununua masimu. Maziwa ni 50. Wewe unachukua 10 bob unakula nao kangumu. Kama hujafika wapi nyumbani. So when you reach home you tell mommy I bought milk at 60 bob. Mommy will say no. Milk was not 60 bob it was 50. No mommy, the price has gone up. It is 60. What have you done? You've stolen your mama's money. And now it means that you are not faithful. Wewe si mwaminifu. Umefanya nini? Umefanya makosa. Ebu to some we want to read from the Bible. Muliandi kayo. First King 
18 verse 4. First King chapter 18 verse 4. We're going to read an, about another good man of God. Today we're reading about the people who serve the Lord. So we're going to read the first King chapter 18 verse 4. What does it say? I'm going to read from here. While Jezebel was killing off the Lord's prophet, Obadiah. Ungeno na muta Obadiah, ungeno na muta Obadiah. Sasa na lingana tu kuyono taka tu kumuita. Obadiah had taken hundred prophets and hidden them in two caves, fifty in each, and he supplied them with food and water. Munasikia kenya Obadiah alifanya, and he ali, alificha nani? Prophets wa mungu, nabi wa mungu. Mungu alimpatia hiyo nguvu ili afanye nini? Afiche awa watu. Ndivyo yako amewaficha, Mungu alikuwa amewalinda. Sasa wewe ukiwa faithful kama Obadia, eh? Mungu atakutumia na atakutumia ku nini? Ku protect watu wa Mungu. So being faithful ni kwamba Obadia alikuwa kwa nyumba ya Jezebel. Nani anajua Jezebel? Jezebel alikuwa mtu mama mbaya kabisa. Ronga vinye alikuwa mapaka paka vitu amepaka vitu sio kama mshina picha Jezebel. Hm? Hata ukuiji ukitembea utaona watu wengi wanaka tu kama Jezebel. Sasa yeye alikuwa akiwa kwa hivyo. Alikuwa mbaya, alikuwa anaua nini watu wa Mungu. Na kwa nyumba yake kulikuwa na mtu mmoja ambaye alikuwa very faithful. He was called who Obadia. Obadia was really serving God. He's in a house where he cannot even read his Bible. He cannot pray. But in that house he had time to go, do what? To go and pray. What did he do? He had to isolate himself, maybe in the kitchen, maybe in the toilet, or maybe when he's even tending to the cuckoos, aliamua mimi tunda ni roho yangu, nitasavu mungu yangu. Na si lazima upige kelele, sasa ndi unaomba, kila mtu asikia pana. Umejua obadhi alikuwa pahali, angesema tu mungu, tu mungu, tu wa ukweni. Angeuliwa vinyama wa makufu, tisengina kwa nauliwa. Lakini ya alisema, mimi najua mungu akondani yangu. Si mungu akondani yetu. The Bible tells us, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. The Lord is inside us. So he's ministering to us. God will be listening to you as you pray. So you just isolate yourself, go somewhere and pray. God will listen to you. And that is why Obadiah was very faithful to God. That even he was in a place where he was not allowed to worship and praise the Lord. He decided, even if I'm here, I will still remain faithful to my God. Come away. When you are given 50 bob, uh, 60 bob to go and buy, um, maybe you're given 100 bob to go and buy milk. Please buy milk using 50 bob and the remaining 50 bob, take it to who? Take it to to your mother. If you don't do that, you become unfaithful. And when you're un un unfaithful, that is what? That is sin. So if you want God to locate you where you are, just be faithful. Be faithful. Even if you're looking for a job or you are looking, if you want to be number one or you want to do anything, just remain faithful. When you are faithful, God is going to reward you. The way he used to Obadiah even to do what? To do that which the Lord wants him to do. And God used it. He used him at that particular time. I am going to the key. Me, I have my keys here. I'm going to key number. Remind me key number. Three. Key number three. I have my keys here. Key number three is I want us to read here. Key number three is prayer. Prayer. What is prayer? Hmm? What is prayer? Prayer is talking to God. When you talk to God, you are doing what? Pray. And we have different ways how we do what we pray. We can sing, we can worship, we can praise, we can memorize a memory verse, we can read the word, we can meditate uh, upon the word of God, or also we can do what? We can read the word of God. All those are prayers. You can also pray by even giving gift, that is still prayer. By even giving whatever you have, you give to somebody. That's another way of praying. Hmm? We want to read about somebody who prayed. And I'll ask, I want to ask you children, do you pray? Watoto munaomba. Ama nye ino tutu wa Sunday. Sunday itu ndio sikuli ambao munaomba. 
So we want to read about somebody in the Bible who prayed. Let us read the book of Luke, chapter 3, verse 36 to 37. We are going to read Luke 2, chapter 36. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Panuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband uh, seven years after her marriage. And, the weed, and she was widowed until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. What was she doing? She never left the house of God. You can be anywhere. The house of God does not mean that you have to be in the church. Even in your house, you know where you always go and pray. Anywhere you can pray, in the toilet, in the bathroom, everywhere you can pray. So Anna was praying every day, every hour. She's just talking to God. She doesn't go and waste time. She's uh, doing other things, but her, she was there for the Lord. So let all of us do what? Be prayerful. Let us talk to the Lord. If you don't talk to the Lord, there is no way God will answer you. If you want God to answer you, you have to do what? You have to pray. So you're going to the last thing. The last one, you're going to key number four. So we have one, two, three, four. Key number four. Key number four is being bold and confident. We are seeing. Have you written the verse? So you want to read the verse. Our verse you're going to read is 2 Kings. 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 1 to 4. 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 1 to 4. It says, Now Naaman was commander of the army of king of Aram. He was a great man in the sight of his master and highly regarded because through him the Lord gave the victory to Aram. Aram. He was a valiant soldier but had leprosy. Now the, hand, now the band of the raiders from Aram had gone out and had taken captive a young girl from, from Israel and she served Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, If only my master would see the prophet who is in Samaria, he would, uh, he would be, he could, he could cure him of his leprosy. Verse 4, Naaman went to his master and, and told him what the girl from Israel uh, had said. So this girl was bold. It's good to be bold. When you are bold, you can go and preach and even tell somebody something that they never knew. How many of us are bold? Many a times you know the word of God. You just know you need to go and just tell them. This is what the, the, word, the word of God is saying. And then God will do what will answer it. So let all of us be bold. Let's tell people about our, our God. Let us be uh, evangelists. We can tell uh, other children about our God. And you become bold. And when you are bold, God is going to use you. When this lady told, uh, when Naaman was told, he went and he was prayed for and he was healed. He went and got into the water and he was healed. So if this lady kept quiet about that good thing that the Lord can do, that person wouldn't have been healed. Lakini sasa sisi tufanya nini? Tukue wajasiri, tuende, tunene neno la mungu, ukena kama mtu ni mgonjwa na muambia, tu mimi nita kuombe na utapona. Muombe tu atapona, na ukue tunayimani atapona. Sawa sawa. Na kwa vile muda yetu meenda, we have a memory verse. We have a memory verse. Can you see our memory verse? Our memory verse comes from the book of Psalm chapter 80, verse 3. Can we say uh, uh, our memory verse? Our memory verse comes from the book of Psalms chapter 80, verse 3. What does it say? Restore us, O God, cause your face to shine, and we shall be saved. Again, restore us, O God, cause your face to shine. And we shall be saved. We to say Metena, restore us, O oh God. Restore us, O oh God. 
cause your face to shine, and we shall be saved. Let that will be the prayer for everyone. God wants to restore us. And from using these keys, key number one, we say it was what? Being humble. Key number two was faith. Key number three was prayer. And key number four was being bold and confident. When we do this, these keys are going to open what? God's restoration. And God is going to bring us back to where he wants us to be. We remember we are going back to school and you want God to restore us to number one. We want God to restore us to that best place God wants us to be. We can only do that by using the keys that he has taught us. Be humble, pray, um, be faithful, and then be bold. Sawa sawa. We want to pray now as we finish. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we want to thank you for your word that you've taught us, O oh God. Holy Spirit of the living God, we surrender unto you. Because by our own we cannot, but it's only you can help us, O oh my Father, to be bold and confident, to be humble, to pray, my Father, and even to be faithful to thee. Father, help us even as your children to do that which is pleasing before thee. We are yearning for you, my Father, that you may use us in this generation. We bless you and we glorify your name. It is in Jesus' name that we pray and believe. Amen.